Next what we're going to do is we're going to look at transformations of exponential functions. So we've done this for pretty much every function that we've studied so far. We've studied the effects of A, B, C, and D. So this is how uh, those A, B, and C, and D would appear in an exponential function. So what we already know, A, A is going to affect the shape of your graph vertically. Uh, if A is, has an absolute value larger than 1, you're going to have a vertical stretch. If A is has an absolute value between 0 and 1, you'll have a vertical shrink. And if A is negative, it's going to cause you to reflect about the x-axis. B, uh, on the other hand, is kind of the inverse of what A might do. So if B has an absolute value that's larger than 1, you'll have a horizontal shrink. If uh, B has an absolute value in between 0 and 1, you have a horizontal stretch. And if B is negative, just like in that last example, it's going to cause you to reflect about the y-axis. So that's what B does. Uh, C, when you're looking at C, C is going to uh, not affect the shape of your graph, but only the location. So it's going to horizontally shift your graph. Be careful because it's always going to be the opposite of how it would appear. So if you have x plus 2, you're going to move left 2 x minus uh, 1, you'll move right 1. And then D is going to affect the location of your graph vertically. So it'll either move it up or down. So let's see if we can't look at a couple examples. On the first example, we're asked to graph f of x is equal to 3 to the x plus 1 power. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the exponential function f of x is equal to uh, 3 to the x power, and we're going to shift that graph. So what we have right here is this. Uh, this is actually going to represent our C. So what that's going to do, it's going to move our graph left 1. So we're just going to take all these values and move them left 1. So uh, 0 comma 1 will be negative 1 comma 1. Uh, negative 1 comma 1 third will be negative 2 comma 1 third. This point will be here and this point will be here. So when we shift our graph left 1, our graph will look a little something like that. It doesn't change the shape of the graph, it only moves it left or right. Another example is this one right here. So again, we're going to have to find our parent function, which I have graphed. f of x is equal to 2 to the x power. And then next what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what we have. Well, this represents our d. So therefore, it's going to move our graph down 3. So what this does, this is actually going to affect our graph because it will change where our horizontal asymptote was. Our horizontal asymptote was the x-axis. But when you move everything down 3, now your horizontal asymptote will be this line right here. Uh, y is equal to negative 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move all the other points down 3 also. So this point will go 1, 2, 3. It'll be right here. That point will be here. So what's going to happen is this is the line that's going to approach. Moving this down 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And 1, so again, it's not going to affect the shape of our graph, only the location. So our graph will look a little something like that when we move it down 3. Transformations of exponential functions.